Allah Azza wa began telling His Messenger وسلم, you have the same mission as previous nations. And the messengers He highlighted, notice Allah, did, this, did He tell us a lot, a lot about the careers of those messengers? Nuh salam, Musa salam, Isa Ibrahim salam. Did He tell us a lot about their nations? He did, didn't He? Even Ibrahim salam, a little bit, but the others far more. And all of those nations, were those nations destroyed? With the exception of Ibrahim salam, even then He had to deal with Nimrud. We don't know about a nation directly. But were those nations destroyed? So even though he's on the same mission, it's pretty, uh, pretty gloomy outlook. If that happened to all those messengers, and I'm on the same mission. And then on top of that, Allah said, the mushrikun kabura al mushrikeen. It's too hard for them to accept. Then the Muslims said, maybe the hopes lie with the people of knowledge. And Allah says, oh no, actually after knowledge came, they fell into disagreement. <laughs> Maybe their next generation will be better. What happens with the next generation? They're, they're in a doubt that gets worse. <laughs> so wherever you would look for hope, Allah Azza wa says, no, actually, they've, they've got this problem. Oh, the next generation, they've got that problem. So now the Messenger والسلام, is piled with problem on top of problem, on top of problem, on top of problem. The Muslim Islamic work is exactly like that. If you want to think of the obstacles to Islamic work, you will think of problem, on top of problem, on top of problem, on top of problem. These people oppose to us, the, you know, they won't approve the zoning, these people are, you know, they don't support our organization, this one hates us, that one hates us, we got this problem, we got that problem, we got that problem. Every time you're trying to do something for the deen, there will be enough naysayers to tell you, no matter how much you do, no difference will come. Don't worry about it. There's all these efforts are happening, nothing changes ever. It's the standard uncle line, I call it. Brother, you can do everything you want, nothing will change. Nothing will change. There's got this gloomy outlook. If anybody has a right to have a gloomy outlook, is someone who's being told by God Himself, all your audiences, they've got serious problems. <laughs> they've got serious, serious issues. And at the end of all of that, you're supposed to be disheartened. You're supposed to lose steam. You're supposed to not have momentum to carry on. Allah says, فَلِذَٰلِكَ And for that reason, Talking about all of those problems as though they are a reason. فَلِذَٰلِكَ فَدْعُوا Then for that reason, you should invite. I thought all of these are reasons not to invite. Because all of these are reasons to say, what's the point? I was expecting, فَلِذَٰلِكَ لَا تَدْعُوا اُتْرُكُمْ Leave him alone, what's the point? Allah says, فَلِذَٰلِكَ فَدْعُوا because of that reason, because despite all these obstacles, actually because all of these obstacles exist, that's why I've sent you with this revelation. Come, invite them. وَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا umirta, And you remain firm as you've been commanded. You are not standing firm because these people have good potential, or because the outlook in the future is very positive, or because the trends are looking good. Those are none, none of those are reasons for you to stay on task. Your reason to stay on task is you've been commanded. Whether the whole masjid is full of people that are praying, or there's nobody here to pray, you pray. You pray. Don't look around and say, nobody comes here, why should I come here? You can't do that. وَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا umirta. Just like that in Islamic work. We don't think of that in Salat, right? Salat, no matter where you are, you make Salat. Why? Because you think of it as an individual obligation. When it comes to collective work, we say nobody else is joining this organization. Nobody else is helping out at that meeting. Everybody else shows up late to the meeting. Nobody else volunteers, why should I? Allah says, no, you're not doing work in any capacity for Islam because what you see around you. You're doing it because you've been commanded. You see it as something that you have to do. وَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ Very perfect, perfect, perfect placement of the phrase. And don't follow their empty desires. You would think, what are the empty desires of the kuffar? Just live for dunya, have wealth, have fame, etc, etc. That's their ahwa. Not in this ayah. Not here. Their only desire is you should stop. Your desire is get depressed and don't do anything. That would be their biggest empty desire. Allah says, you stay firm while not following their desire. Meaning their desire is for you not to stay firm. Their desire is for you to stop calling. If you get depressed, then they have gotten what they wanted. 
If you get overwhelmed, then they exact, got exactly what they wanted. What's the, you know, وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ And then, so where does your reliance come from? What's your only counsel? If people are not going to be a source of encouragement for you, where's your encouragement going to come from? وَقُلْ آمَنْتُ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ كِتَابٍ Tell them I have come to believe in what Allah has sent down from an amazing book. My iman, my reliance, my trust is in Allah's word. Allah's word becomes my counsel. For the person who's working for Allah's deen in any capacity, the word of Allah is his counsel. It's the, the word of Allah he turns to to get motivation to keep going, to deal with his problems, to soften his heart, to alleviate the sadness. That's where he goes, the word of Allah. That's where she goes, the word of Allah. Amantu bima anzal min kitabin.